Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem IPO. We're given two arrays. One array is the profits array and another array is the capital array. Suppose something like this where we have one, two, three for our profit values and zero, one, one for capital. We're also given an initial capital called W. Let's say it's zero in this case. And we're also given an integer k, in this case, 2. So you can see there's quite a lot of variables in this problem. Our goal is to maximize the amount of money, aka capital, that we have at the end. Initially, we have 0. So what we would like to do is take some of the profits. So maybe we take 2 and we take 3. We can only take up to k of these values. And when we take them, we mean add them to our total capital. So if we start with zero, we add two to it, we add three to it, we end up with five. So that's good. The only catch is that we can only take profits if the capital corresponding with the same index, so like these two or maybe these two or these two, if the capital corresponding to that profit is less than or equal than our current capital. We know we started where W was equal to zero, but as we take profits, our W value will change. So the profits available to us will also change. Though this part tripped me up, when we take a profit, we don't actually have to subtract the capital needed. This is not like the cost it takes us. This is the capital. So as long as our capital is greater than or equal to this, we are allowed to take the profit and we don't lose any capital ever. So once you get past all the variables and different kind of interactions, this problem isn't too bad. So what we're going to want to do is try to find the maximal profits. And we're going to need to do this repeatedly. So you might think we can sort the profits array or use a heap. In this case, using a heap is going to be better, and we're going to see that towards the end. So for now, let's assume we're going to use a heap for the profits, more specifically a max heap, so that we can get the max amount of profit. So let's be naive. Let's say this is in our max heap. We're going to pop the max value, which is 3. Let's say we also added the capital as well. So we see that this profit has a capital of one that is not less than or equal to our current capital. So we can't include this three, at least not yet. So a better solution would have been to not have added this from the beginning to our max heap of profits. We should only initialize that heap with profits that we can actually take. This is the only one we can initially take because it's the only one with a capital of less than or equal to zero. Now let's see what happens when this is initially our max heap. Well, we pop from it. There's only one value to pop in the first place. There's only one value to pop. We get this profit of one. We see the capital is less than or equal to our current capital. So we take the profit and add it. So we get now a profit of one. So let's say we took this profit and now we can only take one more profit. The problem here though is that our max heap of profits is now empty. So what should we do? Should we go through the entire input array? Obviously not this one, but the rest of the input array and see which one of these profits can we now take and then push them onto the max heap of profits so that we can then pop from them? That would definitely work, but you can see in the worst case, Every time we pop from the heap, we would then have to iterate through the entire array again and again and again. This is no better than iterating through the entire array k times. That time complexity would be n times k. That is a brute force approach. But the question is, can we do better than that? And the answer is yes, because we know that among the rest of the array, let's say these are the ones we couldn't afford previously, we didn't have enough capital for them. But now that we have increased our capital, and remember, our capital is never going to go down, it's only going to go up, maybe it'll stay the same, or it'll go up, it'll never go down. So as our capital changes, we might have access to more of these profits, but we don't know which ones. But let's say that this one actually required a capital of two and this one required a capital of one. 
we know for sure that this one is probably going to become available to us before this one because it requires a lower capital. So among all of the ones we haven't considered yet, we should go through them in order of smaller capital and then bigger capital, aka we should maybe take all of these and throw them in a min heap, not based on the profit though, but based on the capital. If we do that, we won't have to iterate through all of these to know which ones have become available. We can look at the one with the lowest needed capital and check is that capital less than or equal to our current capital. If it is, then we take this and pop it from that min heap and push it to the max heap of profits. So we're going to actually have two heaps in this case. This is a pattern that's used in other problems though a little bit differently than this one, but it is a pattern nonetheless. But that's pretty much the entire idea. This problem is not too bad once you can figure out that it is a two heaps problem, which I admit is not easy to do, especially if you haven't seen this pattern before because it is pretty rare. So now how would we solve the rest of this problem? Well, both of these would go into our max heap of profits because we can afford both of them. But which one of them has a higher profit? It's this one. So we would pop this from our max heap of profits and then take that profit, which is three and add it to our current total. Then we would have a current total capital of four. We're only allowed to take two profits. We took both of them. So then we would return this as our result. How did we improve the time complexity? Well, we're going to need to iterate k times. So the time complexity is going to be k times what's going to be the time complexity of pushing to max profits. It's going to be log n in the worst case. What's going to be the time complexity of popping from the minimum capital? It's going to be log n as well. We're going to, in the worst case, have to do two of these on every iteration of the loop, but that's not too bad. If we say this is two times log n, that will reduce to being k times log n anyway. So that is the overall time complexity. Space complexity is going to be big O of n. We do have a couple heaps. So now let's code this up. So what I'm going to do is first create our two heaps. We know one is max profit. Initially, let's set that to be empty. We know these are only the projects that we can actually afford right now. And we're going to have a second heap for minimizing the capital. These are the ones that we can't necessarily afford right now, but maybe in the future we will be able to afford them. The way I'm going to initialize this is first as an array. So I'm going to go through every pair of capital profits that we have in Python. You can do something like this. You can zip the two arrays, but you could do this in like an outer for loop like down here if you wanted to. It's not a big deal. I'm just trying to do this as concisely as possible because this is just kind of the boilerplate. We have our pairs of capital and profit, and we're going to add each pair to this array. And then we're going to take that array and turn it into a heap. In Python, every heap is a min heap by default. So this will turn into a min heap. So now we're going to iterate k times. So every single time we want to pop from the max heap, so the max profit heap, and then take it and add it to the current capital, which I'm just going to use the input parameter because that tells us our starting capital and we know it's going to change. So might as well add to it. And then at the end, we know we're going to return that capital. But we know that so far our max profits is empty. So we have to initialize it and we know that every time we pop from it, then on the next iteration of the loop, we might need to pop from the minimum capital heap and push onto the max profits. So instead of initializing max profits out here, I'm just going to inside here before we pop from it, I'm going to say while our minimum capital heap is non empty and the minimum value in the minimum heap or the root of that minimum heap is at index zero. And we know it actually has a pair of values capital and the profit, the capital, the first value is what's going to be used as the key for this heap. 
So it's gonna minimize all these pairs based on the capital. Since that's the first value, we're gonna now say index zero. So we're getting the capital that is minimal and we're asking, is this less than or equal to our current capital? Because if it is, that means we can pop from this minimum capital heap. And when we pop from it, we're gonna get the capital and the profit. We added both of these, but once we pop them, we only care about the profit. The capital was only used to tell us, can we get this profit or not? If we can, then we don't need this anymore. So even though we popped it, we're not gonna use it. We're just gonna say, this profit is now available to us. So we're gonna push it onto the max profit heap. But the thing is, we want this to be a max heap. So we can't just push the profit because everything is a min heap in Python by default. So if we want this to be a max heap, we have to make this value negative. You can just say negative P or negative one times P. So this will make it a max heap. But since we're trying to add to the capital and we want the capital to be positive, when we pop from here, we're gonna be getting that negative value. So we should say add to it after multiplying this by negative one, or we could say minus equal this, but I think this is probably more readable. But remember, they told us we have to choose at most K profits. It's possible that we don't even have K profits available to us, in which case this would throw an error. Trying to pop from an empty heap will throw an error. So what we should say is if our max heap is ever empty, we might as well break and probably just return at that point because if none of the profits are available to us, we can't increase our current capital, so we can't really get any other profits. So this is the entire code. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.